All right, we're going to do a quick tutorial on the date and time picker dialog in Android. Uh, so by the end of the video, um, you should have a process like this where I click on my text view in this case. And then I will choose the date. In this case, I'll go May 1st of 2016. And then I will pick a time as well, 6.15 AM. Why not? Uh, and then at the end, the data will be parsed into a text view, but in your case, you could have it differently. You could do something else with the data. All right. So uh, let's start with our layout. Actually, nothing much goes on there. It's just our text view. Uh, but we'll have an unclick listener on this to initiate the dialogues. Uh, so not much goes on there. Um, we will keep a, a reference to our current activity later on. Uh, so we will need that. Um, and the way I'm parsing my dates at the moment is using a class called simple date format. Um, and the way you parse your dates is you give it a string. Uh, let's see what it was called. It's a pattern. Yes, yeah, so you give it a string pattern. And in this case, I did it a more American type of way. I'm giving it month, month, day, day, and then four uh, letters for year, and then hour and minutes. And you could get more advanced into this. Um, for example, if you want one to 24, instead of what I had, one to 12, you know, you put you could put a K there instead of an H. Um, and you can uh, put multiple of them. So in this case, since I have Y, 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 uh, you'll have 2016, but if you just put why, why it would just display 16. So you could get more into that, but I won't go much further. Uh, we initialize our text view and then set a click listener in it uh, called text listener, which is this one right here. And whenever I click on it, which in this case was that, what we do is we create a calendar and get instance uh, initialized as uh, the time zone and locale based on the user's uh, location and whatnot, I believe. Uh, yeah, so it does use locale there. Uh, and in this case, it did do it, for example, correctly, since it's May 28th of 2017. Um, and then we will use this calendar to uh, get its year, month, and day of the month. Uh, so that when we click on the dialog, the current date is already there. So this is one way we use the calendar. Um, and this is where we use that activity as well, because it does need context. Uh, it will need a context, so that's that's why we initialized it into this. And I can't do this here, because then we're in the on-click listener context. So we'll give it our activity. Um, and then the date picker also needs another listener. So whenever the user clicks OK, in this case, this is what's going to get called. So we set it to my date data set, which is this one right here, my date data set. So when, they click, uh, when the user clicks OK here, uh, this is going to get called. Um, and yeah, we do give the year, month, and day of month, and whatnot to uh, display the current time already. And then after the user clicks OK, uh, what happens is that we set the calendars, year, month, and day of month to what the user selected. And that comes from the parameters um, of the uh, method on data date set, which is overridden. So we set those variables in our calendar and right after we create the date picker dialog. So in your case, if you only need one of these, for example, you're interested just in the date or just in the time, then you don't need to do this second step. step. Um, again, once again, for our time picker, just like date picker, uh, we need to give our activity for its context. And then it will also need another listener. In this case, we're giving it on time, uh, my time uh, day, data data set, uh, which is this variable here. 
and then we give it its current hour of the day and the current minute. And in this case, we'll cause it to have the current time. So we'll set it to OK. And then it's 4.14 PM. Oh, as, as soon as I set it, 1 to 4.15. There we go. So it's 4.15 PM. And there is my current time correctly showing up. And then the last variable as a Boolean is 24 hour. So if you set this to true, the AM and PM disappears and you get to select from 1 to 24. But we don't want that in this case. Um, so when I click OK at the end, um, the same thing we did with our date. We get the hour of the day and the minute the user selected. and uh, set it to the calendar instance that we had. So in this in this case, we were actually overriding the values. When we did calendar might get instance, it fills it up with the user's current time. But now after they're setting the date and time, we're basically overriding those values. So by this time, the calendar contains all the dates that the user selected. Um, so you could either do wherever you'd like with the data, but in this case, I'm simply uh, getting its time and then formatting it using your simple date formatter uh, that we define at the end. So you get something like this, where you get to select the date and time, and then gets parsed up. And this source code, by the way, is available on GitHub. Okay.